So I'm going to do one of the other um, extended response questions. I've got question 9, and this is all we're getting at the start. There isn't like a description or something on the page before. So a program has been designed to allow users to search for properties for sale. Pseudocode was used to design the program, state another design technique. So we've only got two other design techniques, so I'm going to say structure diagram. The other one's a flowchart. Software development process is described as iterative. Explain why it might be necessary to return to the design stage. Now, it is not to check. Right, that's really important. It's not to go back and check for errors. That's what you do with your testing. So, if you're testing it, you might need to go back... to redesign fix an error you find during testing notice that not that you're you've uh, got to the end of it and now I'm going to go back and recheck all my work that's not what you're doing it's if you find an error you might need to go back and redo something User can search for properties priced from 50000 to 600000 Using the design technique, design an efficient solution to check that the price entered is valid. So this word valid here should be cluing us in that we're going to do input validation. Input validation is always a while. It's never an if. Or nails, right? So this standard algorithm, it's like a pattern that we're going to follow. It's always, always, always a while. Um, you know, at least for you as Python programmers, there's other implementations, but you're always going to do it during, using a while. So you're not going to have an if, you're not going to have an else, and some of you have done that in the prelim. Remember, that would only check once. The whole point of this is it's going to keep checking over and over and over again. That's why we use a loop. So we're going to ask the user to enter... enter the price and then while the price is not valid now to get my my valid right it's going to be well the price is not valid so if the price is not between 50,000 and 600,000 in other words if it's less than 50,000 I forgot to say the price or the price is greater than 600,000. Now, it's an or because it, it can't be both. If I had, say, the number 40,000, that's less than 50,000, but it's not also greater than 600,000, so no number could be less than 50 and greater than 60 at the same time. So it would be impossible, that's why it's an or. So it's less than 50,000 or it's greater than 600,000. We're going to show an error message. It doesn't specifically mention it in this first part, but I'll come back to that. And it's just something that we do anyway when we're doing input validation. And then we ask them to enter the price again. So that's my input validation algorithm. Um, it says down here that there would be an error message if they enter some invalid data. So we've got a test table here. When asked to ensure that the validation works correctly, complete a table with appropriate numerical value for each input. So this is important. You can't just say for the exceptional data a word. right? It's got to be something that's a numerical value. So first of all, um, an extreme value well if I look up here it's got to be fifty thousand six hundred thousand so fifty thousand to six hundred thousand an extreme one is going to be either one of these you don't write both you just pick one so let's say six hundred thousand is the extreme value an exceptional value is something that's outside the range something that 
would set off that loop of the input validation. So I've got to pick a numerical value that's less than 50,000 or greater than 600,000. Let's say I just pick 12, because that's less than 50,000. So that would be outside the range. And then lastly, um, readability of this, and quite often readability is in an assignment rather than in uh, the exam paper. Let's get highlighter. So we've got some variables here, right? UN, PWD, UN, SUN, PWD, SPWD. And if, thankfully this is not something that many of you do when you're writing Python code, but I'm going to start here, part 2. Describe how line 11 could be made more readable. So let's look at line 11. Let's get this UN, SUN, PWD, SPWD. So the way I could make that more readable would be to use meaningful variable names. And then let's give an example just to be sure. E.g. password instead of PWD. Explain how indentation is used to make this more readable. So where is the indentation? So there's indentation on line 12 and that clearly shows that that line is inside the if statement. So if I said on line 12 clearly shows that line is inside the if statement. That's the system smarts that we've already done, but if I look at this question here, so line 11 should have used AND instead of OR, state the type of error. So I've got three types of error. I've got syntax, logic, and execution. First of all, it's not a syntax error. If we look at this, this code would still work. Right? If it worked with OR, it was going to work the same way with AND. It's not a syntax error. An execution error is something that's going to make the program crash. So, you know, maybe we try and divide by zero or we try and do something that's that's impossible. And that's not the case here. If it would have worked with one operator and we've put the wrong logical operator, it's going to produce the wrong result, but the program won't produce an error message. Um, it will just run but give you the wrong answer. So that's a logic error. And that's quite a common logic error as well. And you might have made that logic error yourself when you're doing input validation, like I talked about a minute ago, um, for the AND and OR. 